Hey guys, I just wanted to make this quick video and show you my Chinese glass, China glass collection. Uh, mostly from Baotang, but that uh, big bubbler is from Cali Bear. Um, and I wanted to show you this just to show you I have about about $500 in Chinese glass in my collection. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between Chinese glass and American glass and a lot of what's going on in the forums. Uh, people kind of camps battling back and forth. Um, I'm glad that I spent this amount of money on Chinese glass. I could have easily gotten an American piece for $500, uh, maybe a tube or something, or an Ashmi tube, or something that was nice. And I would have a single piece or an RBR. I can get a clear RBR that just had maybe color around the ring here. And that would be my single piece for four or $500. And it would come in a Pelican case and everything, a dab mat, and it'd be nice. But I don't feel like it would be the conversation piece um, of my collection here. I don't feel like I would get as much enjoyment out of that one piece as I do my entire collection. Um, and functionally, every single piece I have functions excellently. Uh, this, this first beaker here is 18 inch nine millimeter beaker, they call it. However, I used to have a roar, German roar that had the green writing, the light green writing. And it was a seven millimeter roar and it was identical to this beaker in thickness. Um, and they claim this is nine millimeter. So I think, you know, it's probably seven millimeter, but it was identical to that roar. I mean, that roar was made out of uh, shot Durand glass. It was made out of a German glass, which is clearer. It's a, a more expensive glass. But when I say it, I, functionally identical, like I can fit the same down stem, it's the same dimension beaker, it's going to hold the same amount of ice, and it's functionally equivalent. Okay, this sake bottle here is one of the best bubblers um, I've ever used. And, you know, before Chinese glass, I, I was just like uh, most people, just buying stuff from head shops and stuff like that and bubblers that look cool. Um, so after I got this beaker, it blew my mind because it reminded me of my old roar that I sold. I must have bought for $400 in Amsterdam. I mean, this was 15 years ago. Um, and, you know, I got my money back for that piece when I sold it. But this blew my mind. This is my first Chinese glass, and it blew my mind. Um, and then a lot of people started recommending the sake bottle. Um, so I got the sake bottle. I also, got, I also had Bao's single uptake recycler, um, which I sold, uh, which I gave to my plug. So that's a good example of, of, of Chinese glass that I had. I had a clear single uptake of Bao's, and it functioned amazingly. I probably spent $25 for it and waited a month for it to get shipped. And my plug gave me, um, he gave me a quarter of shatter that he normally sells for 20 grams. So he, gives me, he gave me seven grams of shatter, $140 worth of shatter for that piece. Maybe the shatter is worth 100 to him, uh, but still, he just, it functioned so great, that's what he gave me for it. And after that, you know, I bought another piece, and, and now he wants, he wants this piece now. He wants my drain. And he's willing to give me, um, a, he said, a, you know, uh, the same amount, which I told him no, because I paid 130 for this. So, but now he wants to give me, he wants to give me an ounce for it, uh, which would be like 150. Um, but no, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to sell it to him because this is Sigi glass and Bao doesn't make Sigi glass anymore. He doesn't want to work with it any longer. And I really like it and I can't replace it. So I won't sell that one to him. I might sell my RBR for $150 or $150 worth of whatever he has because I spent $90 on that. And he'll probably will buy that eventually from me when I get bored with it and I want a different piece. Um, and he does this because, I mean, he comes over and he uses them with me and we hang out and they function amazing and he falls in love with them. So that sake bottle, I think I paid 55 for it and then I paid 30 for this little cup and that's because it's North Star galaxy glass and it's silver fumed galaxy glass It looks really cool if you, you look at it in person. It's I have a crappy camera here, but it's hard to get a good a good pick of it, but It's black glass with white speckles in it and then they silver fume it to look like galaxy So that was cool and you know, that's the thing with American glass if you were to get this by an American glass blower, you'd pay a lot more money for it, but it would be nicer. Uh, uh, you know, they, they would fume it better. You see this fume work. If you look at some of the Space Tech and some of the Galaxy glass from American glass blowers, 
it, it, it looks, it'll blow your mind away. You know, it, it's just beautiful. Because there are artists that spend several hours on their pieces, where this is production. Um, it's just different markets. And that's something I wanted to talk about, too, because we have a lot of snob, well, not a lot. I came across two or three in China, in the China Glass subreddit. Um, people that come over from Glass Heads and they see that we have this RBR here and they have an RBR and they spent five, six hundred dollars for it. Or maybe they didn't spend whatever. But they and they think it's just it's always going to be superior. And I'm going to make this argument and this is the hill I'm going to die on. And, and people might may disagree with me, but there is no functional reason to buy American glass. There just isn't. I mean, I have Chinese glass recyclers, Chinese glass tubes. They function amazing. They, you, there's, there's nothing to want more out of the function. There are the definitely aesthetic reasons. Like I, I said, uh, that, galaxy, that galaxy glass um, by an American blower, you know, you're just not going to find that in China out of a Chinese blower because they just don't have that type of artisan market. They don't have a, a cannabis culture over there. Um, they're just producing glass because there's demand for it in America. There's demand for cheap glass. So, you know, when you get an American artist like this, this is double amber purple. You see Bao Tang blew this double amber, pur double amber purple. And he didn't use a lot of oxygen in the flame. He didn't strike it. He didn't kill and strike it. And that's why it just looks like this. It looks kind of like the rod just stretched out. Where when you get an American glass blower that strikes the glass and spends her time, uh, this is done by Marilyn Yor, um, you know, you get a different effect on the glass, you see. If I can get my camera to... Uh, this thing does not like focusing. There we go. Yeah, you can see how she struck that glass and the patterns you get. And they can even get crazier. I mean, you see um, Bear Mountain Studios, the way he makes double amber purple is beautiful. And that's what you get with American glass. You get an artist that strikes the glass better. Aesthetically, the piece is going to look better. But functionally, there's nothing to want, really, for, uh, more f than what I got from Chinese glass functionally. There just isn't. Now, um, people will say, like, I'll show, you the, I'll show you the function on this RBR. And people, will, 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 people who own the real RBR will try to find ways to diss it. They'll say, oh, it, 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 it drains too fast. Or the tail is, doesn't thin out and doesn't, doesn't spiral right. Or... You know, they just sort of make up these very superficial re reasons. And there's no functional reason you would want it to drain slow. Not that it doesn't drain slow. It, what it is is it's just in the way you pull it. If you do a sustained pull and you let off slightly, it's going to drain slower. Where if you just pull right off, it's going to drain faster. It's just how you pull. But, you know, people kind of make up these odd reasons on why functionally theirs is better because they know it isn't. And they're part of that club that snobby club of uh, American heady owners, and they have this ideology that everything from China is cheap and you get what you pay for. Uh, no, you know, a lot of modern art is crap. They sold a banana duct tape to a wall for like $200,000 and called it modern art. So it's not, you don't always get what you pay for when you're looking for something that functions. And I don't really want a four or $500 piece. Uh, I use these daily. I wash them out. Sometimes I drop them in the kitchen sink by accident by soaping them up, and they don't break, and I'm glad. If that was a $400, $500 piece, I would have a heart attack every time I cleaned it. I, I just, I'm just not interested in it. I'm not in the market for it. Now, there are reasons to buy American glass, sure. One is the value because people will buy it. You wait on a waiting list for a year, and you buy a piece, and people tend to want that piece. They'll pay more for it. So there are people that make you know a marginal profit off investing in headies. But for the same reason, I can sell my Chinese glass to my plug and I can make a, a you know, 40 percent profit on it, too. Sometimes they're just different markets uh, the, you know, he's not going to buy a, a real RBR because he doesn't really care about glass artists. He doesn't know anything about it where someone looking specifically for a Bear Mountain Studios isn't going to be happy with China glass just because what it is. They want they want a, a, the original piece of art and that's fine. Um, and also there are a lot of glass artists like I mean, like salt. You're not going to get a salt. Uh, piece out of China. Bao Tang tried and it was laughable. It, there, those, that's just a, that's an artist. That's a piece of art. And I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the function of the piece itself. There is no functional benefit. Like you're not going to get a piece that just tastes better, that makes the, the, your, your smoke taste better because it's made in America. No, there's no functional reason. Uh, there are pieces like uh, the Rye Cycler or Dabber Jaws. If you look up Dabber Jaws on Instagram or R Y Cycler, Rye Cycler, 
they make these chunky pieces where the intake and the drain are all like inside and they're kind of chunky and weird looking. And uh, I sent a picture of them to Bao Tang. I sent like 10 pictures of them. And he said, I tried to make something like that and I couldn't. And that's fine. He's a production glass blower. He probably has a team of people making production glass and that's his market. Um, he probably doesn't want to spend the time or the hours investing in trying to design backwards engineer something like that because he can spend his time making production pieces like this and making money. And that's, you know, that's just what the way of, of capitalism is in America. We outsourced all of our labor, all of our corporations outsourced all of our assembly line labor and all of our production labor. So that's where the demand is in China for production pieces. And that's why they make it. They don't have a cannabis culture there. If they did, they would, they would, trust me, I bet there are Chinese glass blowers that are just as good artistically as American glass blowers. There's just not the market for it over there. Okay, so let me take a, let me take a pull of this RBR. You can see the function for yourself here because I know a lot of people want to see it. And they want to see it because they want to pick it apart. And that's cool. As hard as I pull you, you cannot get splash out of this piece. And it bubbles up nice. That's it. Functionally, that's perfect. I don't want anything else. Like I said, aesthetically, yeah, the real ones look a lot nicer. They do. Evan strikes glass amazingly. And there are so much nice, there are so much crazy glass artists too from America, you know, that it's just a different market. All right, so let me take a pull of this and show you my new piece here, because I like this thing. I like the way this thing bubbles. And again, this is replicating a sovereignty. Maybe a sovereignty bubbles a little bit more uniform and higher, maybe a little more perfect. But I got this for 87 bucks. I couldn't be That was some Cali Bear, this piece. I love it. And a lot of the things I'm hearing um, when you start to, people who diss China glass, they kind of like to rely on anti-Chinese tropes that a lot of Americans kind of repeat. You know, that they're stealing our jobs, they're sneaky, they're underhanded, they're stealing his design. You can't patent a glass design. Like, I can't make a vase and says, then patent it and says no one else can make the vase like this. So they're really not stealing anything. They're just making production pieces of designs that other people have made. And there's a market for it. There's a market for it because those artists can't meet the demand for their pieces. And people aren't willing to pay for what, you know, pay the high price for them. I was watching Bao Tang's feed, and he's a nice guy. And he was saying, I'm sorry, I can't speak English that well. And there were maybe about 10 people watching him. And he was showing, he was saying, look, I'm learning how to blow um, large beakers like this. Like large beakers. And there were just trolls all in his feed. You know, it sounded like a Trump rally, the way they're talking about China and just stupid crap. And it's just sad because at the end of the day, he's a working class guy. It's not like he tries to steal jobs from people. It's the corporations really that outsourced our labor to them. And they created the market. They're an, an up upcoming economy. They're a growing economy. They're like in our industrial era where we had child labor and pretty wretched labor standards and wretched capitalism. That's what they have over there. We don't want that here. So we outsource it there. And they kind of have a, a borderline capitalist slave labor um, you know, you know, uh, working class there. And, you know, that's kind of what we demand. We fund with our demand, um, and our policies. So that's enough of my political ramp, but that's my argument right there. 
There is no functional reason to buy American glass. Chinese glass functions amazing. You, there's nothing to want more out of the function. Aesthetically, it's never going to be the same. And a production piece is never going to be the same as an art piece. So aesthetically, yes, you can make a, a million cases aesthetically why American glass is better than Chinese glass. Functionally, I'm telling you, the argument is very hard. And when they try to make the argument against function, it starts to sound silly. Like this kid was telling me, um, you know, when he, I did a video pulling a cart, uh, cartridge, I'll do, I'll do a thing here with my cart. And he, he was saying that this thing should recycle even when it has a flower bowl in it. So um, what do I, like if I pack the bowl, it should function. And I told him there's no way it can function. Once you stop up the joint, there's no way that can function. So this will function like this. But once I put it, once I put the cart in there, it won't because it plugs it up, right? He was saying it should recycle while the cart is in there, while it's plugged up, which is stupid. If anyone understands basic physics, that's not going to happen on a real one on any piece. And that was the argument I got in with this idiot. And I just told, started calling him an idiot because it's obvious. And sure enough, he owned a, a real RBR and he posts in glass heads. So obviously he has this ideology that his has to be better because it's so much more expensive. It has to be better somehow. And that's the type of mental gymnastics he does. Uh, another one I said was saying about the, um, the size of the tail, which doesn't make any sense. I can make this thing, whole thing a tail if I just pull halfway and just keep that cyclone going. I can make the tail as long or as short as I want. You know, it, it's just really stupid. If you owned one, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you owned both of them, you would say the difference between the function is negligible. You may find something different just because the quality control on a production piece can't be as good as an artistic piece that's $400, obviously. But I'm telling you the function would be so negligible, it, it wouldn't, uh, to me, would be worth not mentioning. I've pulled two different RBRs. I pulled an older one, that's a, they're a little stubbier, but they're 14 millimeter, and I pulled a newer one. Um, and both times, I've, I've pulled them maybe a few times or a friend's piece, but I never really gotten a chance to own it and look at it and, and kind of go through sessions with it like I have this one. So it might be a little unfair to compare them, but there was nothing really that stood out outstanding about that piece uh, that this doesn't function the same way. There really wasn't, and I'm being honest about that. Um, I, I think the sovereignties probably function better than this, than this pipe. Um, I think the Flower of Life and the Seed of Life perks are the best that you're probably going to get out of China. Um, I think those grid lines, they really do stack bubbles pretty high. Um, and that's kind of hard to replicate that. that. But eventually they will. I'm sure Bao looks like he's working on it. Um, so functionally, there's nothing Americans can do really that the Chinese can't figure out in backwards engineer. They, it's just, it's not there. Artistically, yeah. Well, that's my rant. If you disagree, say something in the comments. I'm open.